Okay, in this video, we are going to be looking into distance measurement. And we'll be using this little device here. This is the TOF10120. It's a time of flight ranging sensor. And it's very small, very compact. And they're available online for usually under $10. Now, there are other distance sensors available, like the ultrasonic distance transducer, which uses sound to measure distance. Or there's the infrared distance sensor, which uses infrared LEDs to measure distance. But this uh, sensor here uses a laser to measure distance. So it has two parts. It has a laser and it has a detector. And the detection beam width is a lot narrower than the ultrasonic or the infrared distance sensor. Okay, the TOF10120 sensor comes with a cable with six wires. And on the end of the cable, they have female DuPont connectors, and I fed that into an IDC uh, connector adapter, which fits into my breadboard. Now, pin 1 is ground, pin 2 is VCC, which could be 3.3 volts or 5 volts. Pins 3 and 4 is the serial port, so pins 3 is RX, pins 4 is TX, and it's UART compatible, and it runs at 9600 baud, 8 bits, no parity, 1 stop bit. And pins 5 and 6 is the I squared C bus. So pin 5 is SDA. Pin 6 is SCL. So pin 5 would go to A4 on the Arduino Nano. And pin 6 would go to A5 on the Nano. Okay, on the back of the sensor, you can see it has an onboard microcontroller, which does all the calculations. So you don't have to do any calculations in software. It actually outputs the distance directly. Now the range of the sensor is 1800 millimeters or 180 centimeters which is 1.8 meters which is around 6 feet. So all you have to do is read the serial port which is UART compatible or the I squared C port to get your distance measurement and I'll read it out directly in millimeters. Okay next I am going to hook up my distance sensor to my nano using the I squared C port. So before I do that I have to know what the address is of this sensor. So first of all, I'll hook it up to my uh, breadboard and I'll run an I2C scanner and I'll scan the sensor to see what address has been assigned to my TOF10120 sensor. Okay, I have my sensor connected to my Nano and I'm going to run a scanner program that will scan I2C addresses from hex 8 to hex 77. So that's the range of I squared C addresses for 7 bit addressing. So I'll run my program. It's called Scanner. And you can see it picked out hex 52 as my address. So that's what I'll use in my code when I'm uh, writing code to interface my sensor to my nano. Okay, here's my little demo. I have a nano on my breadboard with four LEDs and a buzzer. So this is my collision warning system. So as I bring my hand closer, you can see I get more LEDs coming on. And if I go back, LEDs turn off. So the closer I get, the more LEDs I get. And if I come right up to the sensor, my buzzer goes off. So that's my collision warning, saying I'm too close. So you can apply this to a little robot. And when it comes up to a wall, it senses it, gives it a warning and then it beeps when it's right up up to the wall. So it's a little demo how we could use the sensor in a robot application to detect distance. Okay, if you want to get your sensor up and running really quickly without writing any code, you could use the serial port of the sensor, which is UART compatible. So pin 4 of the sensor is the TX pin and you connect it up to the RX pin of the FTDI module. Now you could run a serial terminal program on your computer like TerraTerm or PuTTY and you can monitor the distance data that's being sent from the sensor. Now when you power up the sensor it's going to automatically continuously send distance data. You can see the, the LED flashing on the FTDI module. Now the camera isn't picking it up properly but it's flashing continuously and that's the data being sent from the sensor. So now we could just monitor the data on our computer in millimeters directly the data that's coming out of our sensor. Okay I have TerraTerm up and running on my computer and it's monitoring the serial port of my sensor 
and I have it set up for 9600 baud. As you can see here, 9600 baud, eight bits, no parity, one stop bit. So there's my data being sent from my sensor. So now I'll put my hand close, slowly close up to the sensor. I'll go closer and closer. And you can see the distance decreasing. I'm right down touching the sensor. Now I'll bring my hand away further and further and further and she'll max out at 2000 millimeters. So that's how we could do it with a serial port very easily. Just hook it up to your computer and run PuTTY or TerraTerm and you could actually monitor the output of the sensor. Okay, here's the code running on my Nano, and it's written in FlashForth, so I'll just go through it quickly. So I'm using GPIO pins 8 to 12, so pins 8 to 11 are the LED, and pin 12 is the beeper. So 0 LED will turn off all LEDs, and 4 LED will turn on all 4 LEDs, and alarm will turn on all 4 LEDs plus the beeper, which is on pin 12. So my main program is, is TOF, time of flight, so it initializes all the GPIO, sets the speed of the I squared C bus to 100 kilohertz, and it goes into a begin until loop. Now this is the infinite loop, so it does a measure, so it measures the distance, and if it's over 200 millimeters, it'll turn off all the LEDs, and if it's within 140 to 180 millimeters, it'll turn on one LED, and it goes down to, if it's within 30 to 59, it will turn on four LEDs, and if it's less than 20 millimeters, it sets off the alarm. So all, all LEDs will come on and the alarm will sound. So the, the word measure sends a null to the I squared C bus at address hex 52. Then it will read two bytes back on the I squared C bus, and that's the upper and lower byte from our distance measurement, and we turn that into a word, and that will give us our measurement from zero to 2,000 millimeters. Okay, so that's how we interface a TOF10120 time of flight ranging sensor to our Arduino Nano. Now the laser output of this sensor is not visible, but we could actually pick it up on our camera, as you can see there. So the output wavelength is 940 nanometers, which is basically infrared band. So any infrared source could affect our, our measurements, so we have to watch out for that. So this sensor is really light, very versatile. We can mount this on a servo motor and we can have it move around on our robot to detect any uh, obstacles. So come up with your own ideas on how you could interface the sensor to the Arduino Nano.